Metabolism means the drug should be what? It's metabolized, that means the useful part of that medication or that drug will be taken and is used by these cells and then the rest will be what? The unwanted is what we call is excreted. Okay. So, at the end, what's formed is a multiple metabolite. A metabolite is a substance formed or necessary for metabolism. Okay? It's the substance that is necessary for the metabolism is called a metabolite. That means, at the end, the metabolite will remain in the cells. That means that the cells are using that metabolite. The rest of the metabolite, that means something that's not needed, it will be excreted from the body. And there is what we call half lifetime in medications. Half lifetime. It means this is the period of time required for the concentration or amount of drug in the body to be reduced to one half. The time needed so that the concentration of that drug is reduced by what? By half an amount. Okay? Let's say if there is like 200 milligram of that medication in the plasma, in the blood, okay? Then, that means when, when you take it, okay? Then if it takes eight hours for that 200 to decrease to 100, then half lifetime of that medication is what? Let's say the plasma concentration of the blood, uh, of the drug, let's say you take a certain drug. What are you taking, for example? Paracetamol. Paracetamol, okay. Let's say 200 milligram. When you take it, its concentration is 200 milligram in the blood, okay? Okay. Then, from that time on, it takes, let's say, eight hours to reduce from 100 to, from 200 to 100. So what, what will be the half-life time of that medication? For eight Yes, half-life time will be what? eight hours. It means that is the time that takes for the medication to reduce by half an amount in concentration. Okay? That's it, for any medication? Yeah, for any drug. Half lifetime is it's not only for medications, even the time is used for chemicals in the whatever in the universe. They have a half lifetime. It means let's say if I put helium, helium a chemical, a chemical, yes, here. And the time that takes for that helium to reduce by half is its half lifetime. Let's say you have a bread at home, okay? Yeah. And it will take you four days to decrease that bread by half the size, by half the amount, yes? So what will be the half lifetime of that bread? Four days. Huh? Four days. That means it takes you half, what? Four days to reduce it by half. Okay, so so this is a term that's used for for like chemicals and so on, in, even in the universe. In the, okay. So, uh, so as we already discussed, that the law requires only who the general doctors, medical doctors, all these nurse practitioner, physician assistant to order what medications? Yes. Anyone cannot give you an order. A lab tech, for example, cannot give you an order. And then, hey, I want you to do this one. Can he do, can he? No. The administrator cannot write and, okay, for you. This, okay? So, we have to know that. And another thing is some certain medications are also restricted by law. By some states and by federal uh, laws. That with some states, they restrict some medications. And uh, there are also what we call controlled substances. Do you know controlled substances? Like cocaine. Yes. Controlled substances. 
uh, those those medications that can lead to physical and psychological dependence. That means they can have a physical and psychological dependence. They, okay, these are these medications. They are called controlled substances. Okay, uh, so there are like five, what, categories of these controlled substances, yes, do you know that? Yeah, there are classes of these controlled substances, controlled. Okay. See this one. This one, can you see here? Can you read it? Category, there are categories. I think it's good if you if you know it, do you let me print it out for you? Yeah, you can read. How many are you? Don't forget me, I'm including me. So, that means there are what? Five classes of these controlled substances. Okay? Uh, let, let's see those. Uh, sometimes it's very important to know, to know these classes. Uh, you know, as you go from class one to class five, what's happening is that, okay, the psychological dependence is what? Decreasing. Okay, it's decreasing. It decreases. That means, which one, which one makes you highly dependent? Category one. The next is two. The next is three. It decreases. Okay. Okay. So, let's see category one. Usually, category ones, they are not prescribed by the doctor. Okay. Usually, but nowadays marijuana is used in some states as a medication. Yes, but so that may be the exception. But heroin, for example, a doctor cannot order. So I have ordered for you 100 milligram of heroin. Okay, can he order? No. no. <laughs> okay. But some that that's what category one means. But some yeah. patients on um, cancer, when they have so much pain, they give them marijuana. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Oh. Only marijuana. Is now exceptional, like they start to as as a medication, okay, for like pains and so on. They take it even from for a long time. So category one means substances have a high potential for abuse, have no currently accepted medical use, no currently no medical use, okay. So what are they like? Heroin, LSD, LSD means the lysergic like acid and marijuana okay these are payout pay so like this one no at least this one like heroin uh, highlight heroin i've been i think at a big uh, here in dc last i don't know how many years back three years so uh, then she was saying in in ohio 60 boys have died of only heroin addiction in like in a few months. Yeah. I think, oh, what? This drug? This drug is really so. There is really lots of drug like transactions throughout the world. Last time in my country, a girl is. Now she's in China. She's caught when. That means she do not know that it's, it's cocaine. But her, her friend gave her just, it's like a shampoo. It's a, it's a shampoo. 
Yeah, it's, this is shampoo, and it's just her friend. She's her friend. And it's like a shampoo. And the other girl, her friend, she said it came from Brazil. And then when she goes to China, then the China government, they got that one. And they took her to jail. And you know, it's very serious now for her because Chinese government, they have the law that they is is up to life uh, life ex execution because 4,000 people die of life ex a year in China. Yeah. 4,000 people. So that means, especially with drugs, the just you go to jail and they have like uh, their laws, their rules. And now uh, the, the, their parents, so they are fighting for. So. Actually, the girl, she, she doesn't know what it is. Uh, what I mean is that there are lots of like transactions like this all over the world. This is just one series, simple thing that we. What I heard is that, for example, they will give you, hey, take this one from my brother there. I, I will give you this quote, okay? I will give you. And then, but everything, this is made of heroin. This is heroin. Or cocaine, you know that? Yeah. And then you, you think that this is just a clause, okay. and then, oh, there's nothing here. Yeah. Well, there is nothing here. So just take it. But they, those people, they take it, and they make heroin, and they change it to what it should be. So this is the world that we are in, okay? <laughs> yeah? Okay. So, uh, wherever you are working, that means you have also the responsibility for... Okay? So usually, maybe the nurse is, like, responsible, but... You are working there. Maybe you will be also be responsible for controlled substances. Okay, so you have to, you have to, you have to lock controlled substances. It should not. You know, if a controlled substance is missed, you will be, you will be asked. Okay, what is the? Let's say you missed a controlled substance. What do you do? What is the first thing that you do? Let's say you you missed a book container of, let's say, something. Yeah. Huh? Let's, you find it where? Even in the trash, you have to, all the trash should be found, should be searched. Yeah? And then you have to report to the manager. If no, police right away should be reported. Yeah? This is very important. Because where did that go? Yeah? So, so, yeah. So that means, maybe if you are responsible for, for that, that means you can see this, you, are, you, are, you have to be accountable for discarded substances. Less if something is discarded, you have to be accountable for that. That means you have to discard it properly. If you have to throw it, you have to should be thrown what? Properly, yeah? If it should be like in re regulated waste material like this, there are some drugs or maybe that should be, okay? It should be put in, in the proper regulated waste container. Okay, uh, counting the drugs is very important. Yes? Counting medical supplies. How, how much did you receive today this morning? How much are you at the end of the day? How much you give to the patient? That's, that's also very important. So that at a regular interval, you have to count medications. The other thing, is there any good local storage or is there a good like storage key of the, okay? Where are you putting that? That All those are very important because the pharmaceutical uh, controlling agencies, they can they control all of this. They come and they check you how, how you put those medications and you have a good place to see, and otherwise it can be cited, your area can be cited, or citation can be given, even if it can, can be closed. There should be a responsible person here for that. Uh, okay, all these are very important. Okay, then let's go to category two. Uh, so what are examples of this? Hydro, hydromorphone. Okay, hydromorphone. 
methadone, meperidine. Meperidine, the other name for meperidine is what's called petidine also. Oxycodone. You know the codon the codon things, they are really very pain it's called dilaudid. Have you heard of dilaudid? Dilaudid is very potent, the pain relieving. That means if you have severe pain, they give you dilaudid or hydromorphone. And fentanyl, morphine, you know morphine, yes? OPM. Okay. Yes, for, for those that they have cancer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah codeine. End of stage. Yeah. Look, cocaine, my goodness, look, cocaine is okay. here. Look. Amphetamine. Methamphetamine. Okay? All these are important. Then category three, hydrocodone and amphetamine. Tylenol with codeine, you see? You can get it in Walmart, this one. Okay, ketamine. Ketamine. Ketamine is basically, it's an anesthetic drug. You know that? It's an anesthetic drug. It's anesthe that which is used to, what? For surgeries. Yeah? But it's also used nowadays for pain relief, like some patients with severe pain, like if they have gunshot wounds like on the part, spinal cord injuries and this like paraplegia or like para, okay? They also get ketamine. Okay, ketamine is an anesthetic drug. Basically, it's an anesthetic drug. That means that's, you give them and patients will sleep and then you do anesthesia with ketamine. That you can't do like one hour surgery with ketamine without, without having uh, intubation or without intubating the patient. Okay. And, Steroid? No, what? Ketamine? Yeah. No, no, it's not steroid. It's not steroid? No, no, it's, it's an anesthetic drug. you anesthetic. When you oh. do for surgery, okay. patients will take anesthesia. Anesthesia. They sleep, yeah? That, that's one of those. But it's given also nowadays for ketamine, for pain. Anabolic steroids or depotestosterone, what does this mean? Anabolic steroids are what they for muscle what? You know for muscle build up. You know there are some people who have their muscles like big muscles here here. Yeah, yeah. maybe they are taking what anabolic anabolic anabolic. Weight lifter and yeah, anabolic steroids. They yes. Take the yes. Okay, and for example, some athletes like world champions. Mm -hmm like soccer players and so on, they take this one. And yeah. But if they are tested, their urine might show something. Yeah. yeah. I remember a long time uh, Maradona was found to have something in his urine, yeah? He was really good for years, but finally he had, he's taking some anabolic steroids. That's what it means. Okay, category four. Uh, Aprazolam, uh, clonazepam, I think clonazepam is one, Clon I like clonazepam. Diazepam, you see, clonazepam and diazepam, they are the same category. They are sleep medication, sleep pills. Yeah, sleep yeah diazepam. Lorazepam, can you see? Lorazepam. Uh, okay. And category four. Five is Robitucin. Have you seen Robitucin on over the counter? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like cough, cough medication for cough. Mm -hmm. So you see, it's like it's category five. Why? Because it has some sleep property. Okay, it kind of take you sleep. So if you go to Walmart and buy Robitucin for not for cough but for sleep, that means you are you are addicted a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, Fenargan, I know Fenargan was the, with codeine, the old name, but Robitucin is common on over the counter. So at least we need to know the some of some of some of these uh, what we call the control substance. So these are some categories of the control substance. Anyone who needs.
for those all serial number your phone number Okay. So, what is a prescription? Okay, this is what we call a prescription, okay? So a prescription is a letter where an order is being given, yes? So there is the provider's address and full information here. There is the name of the patient, date of birth, the address of the patient, and the date is written. And here, there is the medication. Okay, how much is given? The route, which route are you giving? So, when you say route of medications, which routes do you know? Routes of medications. Which routes do you know? One is what? Per os, by, by mouse, yes? Okay. When we say buccal, buccal here in the cheek. Okay. 